In the next few videos, I'm going to introduce you to the three problem solving techniques I've personally used to get through coding interviews with companies such as Google and also to be a better software developer in general. The first tip I want to give you is to think on paper. When I say think on paper, I don't literally mean when you get a coding interview problem, take out a piece of paper out of your pocket or whatever and start writing down your thoughts right there. This is more about how you think about the problem and not about using physical paper per se. So to see what I mean exactly, let's take a look at one example of this. Suppose you're given this problem in which you're supposed to write a function that takes an array of integers and finds two integers out of that array that multiply to 20 together. So with this example, with this given array, you can see that 4 and 5 here multiply to 20 together. So that's the pair you need to find. When a typical candidate is given this problem, they might start writing some code right away to solve this problem, but that's not necessarily the right thing to do. Before you start coding, you want to make sure that you have the right solution in concept. One way to do this is ask yourself, how would I solve this problem on paper? So imagine writing down this array on a piece of paper. Then you're trying to find a pair of numbers that add up to that multiply to 20 in this array. Again, I don't mean that you need to write this down on a piece of paper literally, but I think this is a good way to think about this problem without going into too much implementation detail at the beginning. Then you might say, for example, well, I can look at each item and ask myself, for example, for two at the top, is there a number 10 in this array? So check these numbers one by one and check if any of them is 10. And the answer is no, so let's go to the next number. Look at number four here and ask myself, is there a number five here? Because four and five would multiply to 20 together. And then we can check these numbers now. And once we get to five, we'll just return this pair of numbers, four and five, and we're done. So this is one potential solution to this problem. And this way you can explain it without using any computer science. And this is how you can come up with a solution without going into too much implementation detail. You might also ask yourself, what if you had an array which is much longer than this one? You might have, for example, 1,000 items in this array. Then the previous solution of checking every potential pair of numbers to see if they multiply to 20 would be a lot of work. So ask yourself again, how would I solve this problem on paper? You can imagine a very long piece of paper with 1,000 numbers. What I would do for this problem is I would write down each number I see by going through these numbers one by one on a separate piece of paper. So when we see two, write down two right here. And when we see four, write down four and so on. And whenever we see a new number, for example, five right here, I would ask myself, what's the number that would multiply to 20 with five? The answer is of course, four. So we can, instead of going through this whole array, we can just check this separate piece of paper and ask myself, is there four already? Or have we already seen the number four? The answer is yes. So we can just return four and five from this function and we're done. This way, with this solution, we don't have to check every single potential pair in this array to see if they multiply to 20. Once you have this basic strategy down, which you can use on paper, you can then translate this into data structures and algorithms using your computer science knowledge. With this solution, a good data structure to use to keep track of each number we've seen might be a hash table or a dictionary, for example. To recap, the idea of this strategy is to think about how to solve the given problem in concept first or on paper first, then think about how to translate this into data structures and algorithms using your computer science knowledge. I would even say you shouldn't start coding until you go through this whole process first, unless the problem is so easy that you're fairly certain that your solution is correct and optimal right away. 
Now, this is actually something I used for my daily work as a software developer at Google too. Whenever I had a complicated problem to solve, I would first take out a piece of paper and think about it on paper, this time literally on a physical piece of paper. And then I would consider multiple solutions and make sure that I knew how to solve the problem first before I actually put it in code. So this is a technique that's not only useful for coding interviews, but also to be a better software developer in general too. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching this video. This video was actually an excerpt from my brand new course on Udemy, 11 Essential Coding Interview Questions, in which I cover 11 of the most essential coding interview questions to master for your next coding interview. If you're interested in taking this course, there's a link with a discount code below in the description. All right, I'll see you soon.